Bitcoin, there's a time to get in and a time to get out. All right, so this is the second video of day 28, August 27th. We are attempting to continue with the Crypto Cranker's Guide to the Galaxy of Greed and Grooviness. And uh, if you watched my morning cryptos, you know that I attempted yesterday at a perfect spot uh, with Litecoin. Um, uh, yesterday, I got, I got a buy signal for Litecoin when I was doing my morning cryptos yesterday, Saturday, the 26th of August. And uh, I went to swap about a thousand bucks worth of the Bitcoin that I had into Litecoin and I got tangled up in whatever the miners were doing. They've all, they were all, they all switched to Bitcoin cash for a certain amount of time and then something there changed and then hopefully they're coming back and da 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 da. So my, my transaction, my exchange of from Bitcoin to Litecoin literally hung up and nothing was happening. And eventually uh, this morning, my money did come back. My Bitcoin came back. And so it's back in my wallet. So now I've lost, I had, you know, I had an in here right at 50 yesterday when I decided to make the trade because I was looking at the rising bottoms and this double top. Um, and I was like, time to get in. And of course this morning I come and do the morning cryptos and Bitcoin has, or Litecoin went all the way to 60 essentially, almost up to 60. And so I'm looking to see if I can give this another try and do it on camera. So you guys can see that even though, you know, the train is kind of moving away, there's still time to get in and there's still places to get in. And I still think Litecoin is going to go to $100 in the next week. That's my amateur, uh, intuitive uh, reading. Because if this is happening to me, it's happening to a lot of people. And there's going to be people literally going, yeah, okay, I'm done with Bitcoin. Enough. You know, enough with the Segwit and the this and the hard fork and the, the lack of consensus and the... The, the worrying different groups and like, please, I just want a currency that works, right? So looking at Bitcoin, at Litecoin now, Litecoin, Litecoin, I'm on Litecoin. Um, for me, it's looking like another opportunity to get in. Not as good a price as yesterday, but on the one minute it's down, right? On the 30s, we have kind of some, a little support here at 57 ish, right? So at least it's not at 60, right? So I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna go give it a try. And I'm gonna see if I can get in. Why not? Because I think Bitcoin's gonna crash because it sucks. And it is a balloon at the moment that needs a little fucking popping. The miners need to be told by the end user, hey, not acceptable. I don't know anything technically, but I do know this is a currency that is not usable. That's a problem. If I can't trade it or exchange it for two days, that's a problem. It's a big problem. And like, do, do I have to be the little kid that says, hey, the emperor's not wearing any clothes? Do I have to be the outsider who comes in and goes, uh, really? Why are you guys all like thrashing around in this pond called Bitcoin when there's oceans of other opportunities all around that you can actually swim in? Like, hello? So I'm, I'm a little ranting today. So I'm going to go do it here. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to do it on camera. We're going to go to exchange. Okay, so exchange again. That was my attempted exchange. So Bitcoin, we're going to go to Litecoin, and I'm going to do, uh, again, half of my Bitcoin, just in case it does fucking disappear. At least I'll still have some Bitcoin left to try another day. 
And I'm going to see if the exchange happens today. See if it, you know, see if it actually happens. And uh, let's go watch the progress over here. And that, that little sound was hopefully good. Okay, so we're awaiting the exchange. And see, I don't know anything. I don't know what this liquidity thing is. Precise, final rate. I'm not a math guy. But the thing is, for cryptocurrencies to work, they have to work for people who aren't computer geeks. I'm sorry. I love you guys. You computer geeks are awesome. You've created something beautiful. However, it's still living in the world of ideas. Unless I can buy gas with it, right? Unless I can say fuck you to the US dollar and actually run my life with cryptocurrency. That's what I want. That's what people want. The only the only coins that I'm seeing that are actually working are Litecoin and Dash. Maybe they're going to be the future uh, Amazon or uh, Facebook, right? Versus AOL and MySpace, right? <laughs> Those are strange analogies. But okay, so there we go. I'm not going to stay here making you guys watch this. Let's see if anything... Uh, Okay, so the money has disappeared <laughs> again. We'll give us another shot. Nothing yet from Litecoin, but exchange two minutes ago. At least I, I somewhat feel like I might be able to get my money back, you know. But the bottom line is trying to make an exchange and to try to buy a cryptocurrency at a certain time. Now, look, now Litecoin's going to go up again, right? Things fucking change. We'll see. So anyway, I just wanted you to see that and just kind of give a little follow-up and thank you for putting up with my rants. And uh, I, I'm going to do some more videos. I got a lot of stuff I'm thinking about today and the hypnosis of money is really how we think about money, how we change our beliefs about money to adopt something new, how an entire culture, it's really mass hypnosis of the process of adaptation and I keep kind of comparing all of this to the Ponzi scheme and the reason I keep doing that is because I'm an experiential learner I have to try stuff so in my first week of this challenge I got I got tangled up with the the scams the the micro hashes the ambuses the bit lakes the bit islands the bit ponds the bit swamps the bit uh, bogs <laughs> uh, and the scams and the reason the scams are so successful is because the average person wants something that's simple that they can understand and then somebody uh, a well-meaning idiot shows up like myself or this guy Ryan Burkness and he sees that he can pay off his credit card debt so he starts YouTubing about it and he starts going in with $10,000 at a time and putting it in these Ponzi schemes and pulling out a thousand dollars a day and telling everybody else to do it and they all rush in right and then the people who own the Ponzi scheme are like oh this could take us down with all these people and they can they all take their money out at the same time we, we better shut this thing down right so what happens to Bitcoin when 10 million or 20 million or 30 million people decide to switch to a currency that fucking works. Do you think Bitcoin is going to continue to grow in price? Well, it'll take a couple of weeks for the mainstream media to catch on that Bitcoin actually died this weekend, right? Now, Bitcoin may fix things. They may cobble together some kind of fix, but... is the writing on the wall that Bitcoin was the early adapter, it was AOL, it was good for its time, it set the trend, and now there's way better things, right? We went from AOL uh, as our email thing to then everybody got into, um, oh, Hotmail. And then Hotmail was replaced by Yahoo Mail. And, and even, who has a Yahoo account? My 90-year-old dad, right? Then we all switch to Gmail accounts, right? I mean, the changes are undeniable. 
the user, the end user, ultimately rules this universe. If it's usable, we'll take it and run with it. If it's not, we will dump it and we will look for something else. And we don't wait very long. We are impatient. And that's why I wanted to explore the Ponzi schemes, because I wanted to explore the mindset of the human being who sees an opportunity and how they communicate that opportunity to themselves. What is it in the human mind, the mirror neurons or whatever? We see someone else doing it, and we think, wow, I can do this too, and we jump in, right? The early adapters will do that. They're willing to risk. And then the latecomers are like, oh, everybody's doing it. Oh, it's teenage thinking people. Well, everybody's wearing these new shoes or these new uh, things. Or everybody's getting a, a, a genital, ta a genital uh, piercing. <laughs> or everybody's getting their nipples pierced, mom, right? Like, and then we just fucking run like lemmings into something else but because we don't have all the information because no one can have all the information anymore it's too huge even the nerds and the geeks and the uh the computer wizards they can't keep up with it either there's so much happening the rate of change is so fast but something is going to stick and you throw enough stuff on the wall something is going to stick and so that's what i'm exploring with the hypnosis of money and i hope that makes sense to you guys so that's that's where I am coming from, and, and hopefully I can serve you guys by asking the same questions you're asking. And I'm going to start digging around, and I'm going to find some thought leaders. I found some some people to listen to, but you need some time. You need to take a couple hours and sit and listen to. There's an interview between Roger Vera and Richard Hart, and I think they did a really good job of respecting each other's differences of opinions, but they have different opinions, and they're both people who know this inside and out. And sometimes they lost me with some of the technical language, but in particular, Richard Hart was really good at putting things into uh, language that I could understand. And so I started to get a glimmer of what's really going on behind the scenes. And you can't have a currency that can be uh, hijacked by the miners. And why even have miners, right? What if the miners are the worst part of the system. And what if that's going to go down? You know, you can have all kinds of uh, rights and privileges and design licenses for uh, steam locomotives, but they're worthless. You know, <laughs> you can, you could hide your Bitcoin in a, in a hardware wallet for 10 years, but if you come back to it, is it going to be worth anything? Is it going to be just like having a bunch of Confederate dollars or uh, Tanzanian money, you know, uh, whatever, Mozambican money, <laughs> you know, it's like Weimar Republic money. You know, that's money is malleable. Money is not immutable in that there's no set thing. It's an agreement. It's a communication. We are the ones who agree, yes, this cow is worth X number of pieces of shiny rocks. Money is just designed to make life easier. It's not designed, it's not supposed to be like some theoretical illusion, right? And so now I've made my exchange and I'm going to get hosed again because it's not going through, nothing's happening, Just not, you know, we'll, we'll watch it here. It's waiting, a waiting exchange. That is shitty, people. That is not, that is us being fucked by the miners. And it's like, at the moment, I don't, I don't even want to mine Bitcoin. I don't want to have anything to do with it, right? Now, that may mean I'm an asshole. It may mean I'm a total idiot. You know, a, a flighty late comer to the party, but that's the mindset of millions, if not billions of people, right? If FedEx only got their packages overnight, 
Ah, wait, hold on. Did it go through? Do, 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 I talked long enough. Yes. So it did go through. So things have improved since the the expiration of whatever the Bitcoin cash incentive was for all the miners to abandon us. But still, let me let me say something again. If if 10 minutes is the transaction time, it's still too fucking long. Do you understand people? It needs to be instantaneous. And this is what I hear people keep saying who actually know what they're fucking talking about, the geeks and the computer nerds who are like, yeah, Visa can handle 3 million transactions a second. Bitcoin can handle three, right? That is a problem. That's why all the SegWit shit, but it took them three years to even get it going. That's the problem. So uh, at the moment, as soon as Litecoin makes another little retracement, and maybe maybe now is a good time, I'm going to get the rest of my Bitcoin into Litecoin. Let me look at Dash, see what's going on with Dash. I might be able to get in, do the rest of it into Dash. But I'm, as soon as I can, I'm getting, I'm avoiding Bitcoin. If someone sends me Bitcoin, I'm going to immediately convert it to something else that I can actually use. Okay, so Dash is coming back a little bit. We have a little retracement um, on the one minutes, not so retracy, but it is, it did come back a little bit. So I'm going to see if I can exchange for Dash now and I'm going to give it a shot. Bitcoin, I'm going to do all of my fucking Bitcoin and I'm going to move it into Dash. And if the exchange rate isn't so perfect, I don't care. I just want to get the fuck out of Bitcoin. Okay, right? And again, I'm emotional. I'm an emotional person. Emotions drive. Here we go. Emotions drive these markets. Let's watch the progress here. Okay, so now they're awaiting the exchange. And let's see if I can get my ass out of Bitcoin. Right, And if Bitcoin goes up without me, at this point, I don't fucking care because it doesn't work. Do you see? It's not functioning. So if it goes up in price, I at this point, I can stand on the sidelines and go, yeah, it's going to crash. Because if, if, if it takes so long to make these transactions, that's a serious problem. And if nobody knows what's going on and just suddenly the network doesn't work, People will will leave, right? And that's that's an intense piece of information that we need to consider. And um, and if I'm selling, and I'm getting out of Bitcoin, right? How many other people are like, this is fucked up. I don't want to have anything to do with Bitcoin until they a solve their fucking problems. In which case, it may be too late. You know, Segwit finally activates and and relieves the congestion. But either way, Litecoin is the one that's going to relieve Bitcoin's congestion or Dash. People are just going to go to Dash because it fucking works because they have a fucking team that can fucking make decisions and actually implement improvements, right? Again, every business has to compete with other businesses to be the best. Amazon was the best at what they did. They put fucking Borders books and uh, Barnes & Noble is probably going to follow out of business, right? Because they were better. The end user experience was better, right? I can order something from Amazon now, and it will fucking show up on my doorstep tomorrow. Why? Because Amazon works and FedEx works. And they work, so we use them. Because they make our lives better, right? If something makes your life shittier, you don't use it. If it's annoying, if it's frustrating, you don't use it, right? But meanwhile, why this is all a Ponzi scheme is because in the rest of the world, they're now hearing Bitcoin. Everybody's into Bitcoin. What's Bitcoin? Oh, let me go see what Bitcoin is. It's like a, it's like a barroom fight, you know? First it's two guys, and then everybody comes out to watch, and then pretty soon some other people join in, and pretty soon some, and pretty soon it's a rumble. Pretty soon it's a riot, right? Uh, things happen 
the the thinking patterns of crowds are very different from individuals, and this is a crowd thing, right? There's a crowd of people who are trying to adopt Bitcoin, who are trying to get in, who are trying to benefit from using it, and they don't think logically. Again, this is the hypnosis of money. I'm a student of the human mind, mostly because I'm trying to figure out why I'm so screwed up, <laughs> right? And if I can figure out why I'm so screwed up, that might help you figure out why you're so screwed up and how to, how to be less screwed up so that we can actually do well in this field. Even though we aren't computer geeks, even though we aren't math geniuses, you don't have to be any of those things once this begins to actually work, right? So... That's it for now. I, I don't want to keep you listening to my rants much longer. But this has been fun. And I really appreciate you watching. Please subscribe if you like this. Give me a thumbs up if this is helpful. Uh, if you have questions that you want me to address, I'm going to start kind of hunting down some of the thought leaders in Bitcoin and uh, on Twitter. That's kind of my next move in, in this 90-day uh, challenge of learning and entering this the space and learning as much as I can and hopefully translating some of it for those of us who aren't technical. Uh, so hopefully I can be a bridge between the new adapters who are coming into the space, into the ecosystem of cryptocurrency and, you know, the people that are actually doing the work to make these things possible. And yes, we are early enough in the curve. So those of us who are getting in now will do well, right? It's the beginning of the entire, an entire ecological system, right? And there are lots of different new niches, new uh, environments, new opportunities here. And we're going to explore them. And that's what I'm doing. Oh, the Bitcoin came through. So evidently the miners are back at work. Uh, and they're doing their thing. And now I want to show you my portfolio. Zero Bitcoin. I got Dash. And I got Litecoin. And I got a little Ethereum. And uh, so that's it for this Crypto Cranker's Guide to the Galaxy of Greed. This is Mark Shepard. The larger program is called The Hypnosis of Money. I do the morning cryptos first usually, and then I, I do some other stuff. I kind of follow the threads of curiosity and learning, and I explore different things. Please watch my videos, and please, if you watch some of the earlier videos where I was exploring the, the, uh, the high yield investment programs, please get my lesson. Here's my lesson. They're scams. They're Ponzi schemes. And they're too small to really benefit you, right? However, Bitcoin, it's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. In the best sense of the term that everything is a Ponzi scheme, any viral thought, any virus, any new idea, any new thing that comes through our population. First, it starts small. The early people get in. They see the possibilities. Then more and more and more and more people get in until it peaks. And then people start leaving it, right? And the U.S. dollar is a Ponzi scheme, right? Started in maybe 1913, right? And then more and more people got into it. And it, the bubble, that's what a bubble is. And everything does this. This is somewhat a form of the universe. Look at nature. Look at lemmings. Look at population. Look at all these different things. And it's kind of frightening to realize that this is a pattern that happens over and over and over again throughout the universe. The universe wants to expand. The universe is expanding and growing. And at some point, it's going to collapse back in on itself and there will be another big bang, right? That is one of the fundamental laws of the universe. And human beings have been able to harness it, but we've also been hurt by it. So please people, wake up. Wake up to these huge things that are happening around us and be smart with your money. <laughs> Play only with money that you can afford to lose because there's a lot of uncertainty here. And so it looks like Bitcoin is back, 
but I'm, I'm not convinced at this point. I'm not happy with it. And I'm looking to see, it will probably go, Bitcoin will probably hit 5,000. There's my prediction. Bitcoin will hit 5,000 and then it will fucking fall like a rock. And you'll see probably Bitcoin Cash will rise in price because at least those guys are aggressive and they're trying to get it moving faster, but I don't know the technical details. I think they both, both of them may just be done. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the answers. All I'm trying to do is to protect my own ass, at, <laughs> right? And that's what everyone is going to do. Everyone is going to try to protect themselves from getting ponzied by the whole Bitcoin bubble. And again, I apologize if these are extreme views, but this is, I'm trying to kind of give voice to the millions of people who are coming into the ecology, into the ecosystem of cryptocurrency. And, and this is what, this is what I'm hearing. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right? So, uh, that's it. Someone please start the damn music so I can stop ranting and talking and maybe go make another video. <laughs> Thank you guys. I really appreciate your support, your sub your suggestions, your subscribings, your commentings, your commentings, and, and those thumbs up really helped me a lot because, uh, YouTube, YouTube works. It's not perfect, but it does what it does very well, right? And there were times in the early days when YouTube was shaky and it would go down and people would be pissed, right? I remember search engines, Alta Vista. I used to use Alta Vista. There was a couple others, but Google came in and it was just so much better that they just literally wiped everybody out. We are in the place right now where some currency is going to be so usable, so convenient, so affordable, so predictable, so steady that we can use it for actual fucking money. We don't know what that is yet. Litecoin, Dash, right now they look to be the best because you can get them, you can put them in a wallet, and you can exchange them, <laughs> right? Those are valuable uses and they're not overpriced. So there's still some room for them to grow in value. And you can get in now, and if you get some, it will grow in value. And that's what people are trying to do, to expand their assets, to grow their wealth. Because there's no other place you can do it anywhere else. The US dollar doesn't work. Uh, the stock market doesn't work. Bonds don't work. Banks don't work, other than you go to a bank at least you can get an instant transaction, right? So the need is huge. The hunger is there. The market is hungry. People are like fucking piranhas trying to find a place, a way to make their lives better with their money. Cryptocurrencies could deliver on that. They haven't so far. And uh, that's it. I really will shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> Thank you, people. I really appreciate you. And... Uh, Whew, start the music. Start the music. Maybe I'll just put up some music stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. why would you guys listen to that, right? <laughs>